good day to you. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. It is the fifth Sunday in ordinary time, brothers and sisters, and in today's Gospel, Jesus reminds us of our calling to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Can we still season the lives of others with our deeds? Can we illumine the way for others with our words? This is a good reminder for all of us, especially as we continue our spiritual journey and growth this ordinary time. Let our word and deed end in the glorification of our Heavenly Father. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and He will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The Word of the Lord The just man is alive
darkness to the upright. His heart is steadfast, he shall not fear. Lavishly he gives to the in glory the just man is light in the darkness to the upright the just man is a light in the darkness A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The Word of the Lord. Be persons for others. We have heard this many times and in many different ways, but it is worth reminding ourselves of. Why do we exist? What type of persons are we? Are we living for ourselves or are we living for others? In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we see this image of light and darkness coming up again. The prophet Isaiah has so many memorable passages involving the interplay between light and darkness. Here, we see how light comes. Light will come when we share bread with the hungry, when we clothe the naked, when we give shelter to the homeless. That's light. That's what brings light to others and that will bring light to us too when we do something for others especially those in need light emanates from us we become light in actions that benefit others It is the light of caring, of love, of compassion. It is the light that every genuine human heart contains, but often hidden. But when we do an action for others, 
suddenly that light shines and the darkness of poverty, homelessness, and oppression somehow is diminished, if not totally conquered. And if, according to Isaiah, we remove in our midst oppression, if we remove in our midst anything that will unjustly put down other human beings, then light will envelop us. And it is a double, if you want to call it, double light. The person doing good to others is enlightened. And he or she radiates that light to others who are living or walking in darkness, being persons for others. And what an encouragement, my dear brothers and sisters. Isaiah says, if you are light to other people because of your good deeds done for them, then you will also be forgiven of your sins. You will find justice and vindication before God. Your prayers will be heard. You will be protected. You will experience the light and consolation of the Lord. Be a person for others. In the second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, we have this unique apostle showing us how he was a person for others, especially through his missionary life. Wow. Preaching the Word of God, devoting his whole life, facing persecution, facing hardships, all of that, not for himself, but for others, so that they would get to know Jesus Christ, so that they could hear the gospel, but St. Paul reminds us of something that is profound. While doing something good to others is laudable and should be encouraged, and in his case, that external action is preaching the Word of God, what we call evangelization, St. Paul brings it to a deeper level. Externally, you could be a person for others because of your action. Okay, you give bread. Okay, you give uh, water to the thirsty. Okay, you give clothing to the naked. Yes, and in his case, he preaches the word of God. But St. Paul is not content with that external manifestation of being for others. In his experience, he says, he approaches his preaching, his outward preaching, with fear and trepidation. He does not bring human, worldly wisdom and eloquence in his good deed of preaching the gospel. Why? He does not want to compete with the Word of God. The Word of God, the Gospel of Jesus, is in itself eloquent, is in itself powerful, is in itself the truth and wisdom of God. So he is very careful in his preaching ministry not to take away from Jesus and the words of Jesus their power. Wow! This is really being a person for others and for Jesus. St. Paul knows the temptation. He might be preaching the Word of God, but instead of leading people to Jesus, he leads them 
to himself. They forget the words of Jesus and they remember the eloquence of Paul. Now, we're not saying we should be haphazard in our good deeds. And in this case, in our proclamation of the word. No, we need to prepare. We need to, uh, to bring in all the goodness and the talents that we have. But again, the caution. You are not there to promote yourselves. That is not being a person for others and being a person for Jesus. St. Paul reminds us, do your good deed. Preach the word of God, but make sure it is Jesus who is known and not just you. You serve the word of Jesus and the person of Jesus. That is how we become a person for others and for Jesus. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus said to His disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord Be persons for others. We have been reflecting on the beautiful readings that we have for this day. And uh, we focus on that theme, be persons for others. In the first reading from Isaiah, that's how we bring light to others. By feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and giving shelter to the oppressed and the homeless. That gives light. That awakens the light in us. And the Lord will be kind to us too. In the second reading, St. Paul exercises being a person for others by his missionary preaching. But he is also very careful. He should be a person for Jesus Christ. So it is not human eloquence and wisdom that he brings. He is very careful that the word of Jesus and the person of Jesus are not robbed of their proper place because of his wisdom. So, while doing the good deed of preaching, he's very careful, I should not compete with Jesus. Let Jesus shine. Let him be the light and not his human wisdom and eloquence. The Gospel from St. Matthew follows the same line. Jesus uses three images. First, salt. You are the salt of the earth. He tells his disciples. Salt. Salt does not exist for itself. The saltiness of salt <laughs> is not for its own sake. Salt is for others. Salt is to serve the goodness of the food. Salt enhances the taste of the vegetables, of meat and of fish. And the moment salt does that, and it is dissolved in the food that it is serving, then people 
appreciate the food that has been served by the salt. The salt, salt does not exist for itself. Salt is for others. And the disciples of Christ should be like that. The second image, you are the light of the world. Again, light, it is not for its own sake, especially in the house, especially uh, in, in public places. Light is there for us so that we would know the way, so that we would be safe, so that we would not stumble or get into accidents. Light is not there to draw our attention to itself. Light serves us by making us see the surroundings. And then we know where to go. The disciples are like that. Not calling attention to themselves, but for the service of others. The third image, a city set on a hill. Now, during the time of Jesus, the cities were constructed on top of high places like hills, not only for safety, but also to serve as signposts, especially to travelers and pilgrims. You know, when you see, oh, there, the temple, or oh, wow, that fortress, then you know you are traveling in the right direction. And you also feel the consolation. Well, I am approaching my destination. So the city set on the hill, again, serves its inhabitants, but also serves people far and wide. Another image of being someone for others. Beautiful images taken from ordinary life, but a beautiful description of our calling and our mission. You are not here for yourselves. Just like St. Paul, you have heard the gospel, you have known Jesus, but that's not just for yourself. Be salt. Let the gospel restore flavor to life. Let the gospel of Jesus bring light to others. Let Jesus be the city on the hill, being the reference point and the signpost for other people walking, searching for the meaning of life. And Jesus adds, just like in the first reading, by your good deeds and your good actions, which people must see, Aha! You bring light to, to others. And hopefully, seeing your good deeds, they will give praise to God. This was the intention of St. Paul in the second reading. He preaches the word, the gospel, well, not in order to draw attention to himself, but so that people would get to know Jesus. The same, we do our good deeds, and people must see them, must experience our goodness. And hopefully, they will see beyond us. They will see the God, the Father, who is the source of all good. The Father whom we are obeying. The Father whom we should proclaim in every good action that we do. Here in the Philippines, we just experienced the eruption of a, a volcano, Ta'al Volcano. And the images are both fascinating and terrifying. When you see this cloud of dust, dark, gray, and then you see the ash fall, you know, uh, covering different towns, cities, and you see the uh, fissures 
on the roads because of the earthquake and the fear of the people, the darkness brought about by the ashes, but also the darkness coming from uncertainty and destruction. But there was another eruption, the eruption of compassion, solidarity. People on their own opening their houses to welcome those who have been rendered homeless. People bringing food, water, medicine, even when they were not called officially to do it. And then you say, yes, the eruption of the volcano brought darkness. But there is definitely a more powerful eruption coming from hearts convinced that they are men and women for others. Then there is light and the Father is glorified. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. On February 11th, we are going to observe the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes and the World Day of the Sick. In 1858, Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette Subiru at a grotto in Lourdes, France. Dressed in white with a blue girdle, the Lady introduced herself as the Immaculate Conception and asked the young Bernadette to dig a hole in the ground where a spring soon flowed. The apparition site then became a pilgrimage site, particularly for the sick, because of the many reports of healing attributed to the intercession of Our Lady of Lourdes. Now, what can we learn from St. Bernadette and her experience? For one, we can look at her experience as a sign that the Lord continues to proclaim His good news to the poor. The Subiru family lived in dire poverty. Bernadette was also said to be a slow learner. She was sickly and had little time to study because she had to take care of her younger siblings. But she was chosen to become an instrument of God's healing when Our Lady appeared to her. Since then, many people have experienced physical and spiritual healing when they open themselves to God through Our Lady. Another thing we can learn from Saint Bernadette is her humility. She did not cling to the popularity of Lourdes. In fact, she even moved to the town of Neve, where she became a sister of charity and Christian instruction. There, she served the Lord in caring for the sick, admitted to their hospice, and in adoration at the altar. When asked why she distanced herself from Lourdes, Saint Bernadette said, A broom. How many of us could look at ourselves as lowly instruments? Utter humility. For her, the words of Our Lady were enough. I do not promise to make you happy in this world, but in the other. So she persisted serving as a religious sister and kept the faith even when she contracted tuberculosis of the lungs and the bones that led to her death on 16th of April, 1879 at Never, 
away from her hometown, Lourdes. Our Lady and Saint Bernadette pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your friends. The first point is, what are the hindrances to being a person for others? Ano ang mga nagiging hadlang sa pagiging tao para sa kapwa? The second point is, how can we lead people to God and not to ourselves? Papano natin magagabayan ang mga tao sa Diyos at hindi sa ating sarili? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people, so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, we have heard Jesus speaking to us through the scriptures. It is time to go forth and fulfill his word. See you next week here on The Word Exposed.